Hello, my name is Lily, and I will talk about our paper on hyperbolic image embeddings. Um, in many computer vision tasks, it is common to embed data to such a metric space, and usually uh, it is Euclidean or spherical space. Recently, several papers uh, show that one can also use hyperbolic spaces for data embeddings. Um, in our work, we show that embeddings to hyperbolic spaces can be also beneficial for visual data as well. So basically, hyperbolic space is a space of a constant negative curvature. Well, for example, Euclidean space has zero curvature and spherical space has positive curvature. And apparently this property of a negative curvature makes hyperbolic spaces attractive for embeddings of data with hidden hierarchy. Um, so first of all, there are several equivalent models to describe hyperbolic space. And uh, in our work, we choose one of the most popular models, which is poincare ball model. So formally, it is defined in the following way. So we have a pair of a union ball and the corresponding metric tensor. Um, on the picture on the right, you can see the visualization uh, of uh, this model and the schematic representation of points and lines in poincare ball model. So as we've mentioned before, hyperbolic spaces are very suitable for embeddings of data with hidden hierarchy. Um, it was recently proved that one can uh, embed a tree to Poincare ball with a small error. So recently it was proposed to, to use Poincare ball model for embeddings of uh, discrete data with clear hierarchy, for example, uh, taxonomies. Um, in our work, we hypothesize that there may be hidden hierarchy in visual data as well. So uh, we can also benefit from the embeddings to hyperbolic spaces. So the natural question is uh, whether visual data is indeed hyperbolic. Uh, we propose to estimate uh, a delta hyperbolicity, which is uh, informally an indicator of uh, the data set um, hyperbolicity degree. So the normalized value of this delta lies between 0 and 1, where 0 corresponds to purely hyperbolic space, for example, to trees, and uh, 1 corresponds to non-hyperbolic space, for example, to sphere. So we have uh, measured this uh, delta value for visual data, and uh, we have considered four visual data sets, and uh, we have extracted the features using three different encoders. Um, and in all cases, we can see that uh, the calculated delta value is closer to zero. So we could indeed benefit from the embeddings to hyperbolic spaces. So, okay, how can we learn these embeddings? Um, in our work, we propose a very simple setup in which we just add one layer which um, performs exponential mapping from Euclidean to hyperbolic space. And uh, we add this layer after a standard neural network of choice. So we then can modify the loss functions so it would operate in hyperbolic space. And uh, we can train the whole model end to end. In our experiments, we consider uh, the task of few shot learning. And in this setting, we have a very low number of examples per class in the batch. So the quality of uh, embedding is crucial here. Um, on the top picture on the right, you can see the visualization of learned embedding in Poincare ball model for data sets uh, consisting of the images of birds. Uh, so we can see that uh, this embedding looks very distinctive. Um, on this slide, you can see uh, some of our experimental results. Uh, and uh, additional experiments, uh, for example, on uh, person identification can be found in our paper. Um, in the most settings, we have outperformed the methods separating in Euclidean or spherical spaces, even using a very simple convolutional network. So, uh, okay, to quickly summarize, we have shown that visual data is hyperbolic in some sense. We also uh, showed how we can um, estimate uh, a degree of hyperbolicity of the data. And we showed how a simple transition from Euclidean to hyperbolic space can boost the model performance. So we also have released the code. You can find it on GitHub site. So that's it. Thank you for your attention.